Thank you for listening to the Sunday morning message from the Awakening Ways Spiritual Community in Atascadero, California. We invite you to experience the love and the joy of living the consciously awakened life right here, right now. Good morning, beloveds. Last week, we had the pleasure of hearing Dr. Jan Morgan talk about the Mothering Day in, in the UK, as it's called. And in this week, we're, we're going back to our seat of awakening, creativity. You know, as we've gone through this COVID-19 experience, I've seen so many interesting reactions to it. Some of it have been very creative, and some of them have been very reactive. By that I mean some people are accepting the situation as it exists and becoming more creative about how they live through it and continue to manifest their abundance. While others are fighting against the experience, trying to pretend that it doesn't exist, trying to go back to what they considered to be the norm without first accepting this experience for what it is. But isn't it interesting that the, both words, creative and reactive, contain exactly the same letters? Both of them are manifestations of our own consciousness. Those who are being creative are finding about the COVID-19, are finding success in new ways. Restaurants that, that are doing curb service, um, or take out uh, and, and have gone out of their way to find new means for people to get their food. Internet and tech companies that have told their employees they could work from home and some of them have said that their employees who are staff and working on computers all day can work from home forever if that's what they want to do. By cutting down on the amount of travel, interestingly enough, we're aiding the environment and we're allowing people to work and to live in an entirely new way and those businesses that are doing that are can expect a bright future after we come out of this because they honor the shelter in place they're helping to minimize the virus's effects on the general population, and that positive energy will carry forth. Those who resist the experience and try to force a return to normalcy are serving an equally noble goal of trying to get the economy back up and running again, of trying to, to get their businesses back up and running again so that they, they and their employees can make a living. but they're caught in a situation where they're destined to expand the virus's effect while at the same time hurting themselves economically in the long run. Deepak Chopra explains it this way. When you force solutions on problems, you only create new problems. But when you put your attention on the uncertainty, you witness the uncertainty while you expectantly wait for the solution to emerge out of the chaos and the confusion. Then what emerges is something very fabulous and exciting. Something very fabulous and exciting. So as we do our affirmative prayer right now for ourselves, for our, our world, why aren't we getting the result we're looking for? Why does it seem, why is it that it feels like a struggle to manifest the divine healing the world is seeking? The answer, said Ernest Holmes, is this. The only struggle, the only battle, the only thing that needs to be overcome is our own ignorance, our own lack of awareness and recognition of the beneficent power and creativity that's the source of all things. Right now, this pandemic is continuing on unabated. It is not by any means going away, will not for the, at least the next couple of months. And even those of us that believe 
and walk a spiritual path are having a hard time, are finding it very difficult to ignore the apparent reality of what's going on in the world. It's so prevalent that on Friday, a new pandemic was announced, mental depression. While we're at home, Terry and I have both been reading a book called Quantum Revelation by Paul Levy. Levy is a spiritual teacher um, and healer, and, and he's a com his teachings are a combination of Carl Jung and quantum physics. And they're, they're quite interesting. And his, uh, what he, he says that we're all suffering in one way from a, or another from a mental virus, which he calls a wetigo. Wetico. A wetico is the Ojibwe word for uh, the Ojibwe were a, a, a tri our tribe on the east coast of the United States uh, on, in, and Canada and go down through the Great Lakes area of uh, northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and northern Illinois. And the Sauk people who, um, anyway, the, wetico, the, the, the Ojibwe called it a wetico. Uh, the, the Sauk people that were primarily where I grew up in Northern Illinois um, called it a Wendigo, Wendigo. And, and being drawn to the Sauk, I've, I've always felt an affinity for them. I used to have to drive the Sauk trail to get to work every morning. Um, I'm going to use the word Wendigo to explain what Levy is talking about. He says, that the situation we're in is not an external manifestation of physical reality in any way, but a natural result of our using our universal creativity in, a, in our shadow, in a disastrous way. It's caused by a Wendigo-like virus that resides in what Jung called our shadow self. The Wendigo is described as a monster a monster that takes hum some aspects of human form, or a human who has been possessed by a monstrous spirit and has become monstrous in return, in turn. And, and what Levy says is that part of us that is our own Wendigo is so deeply hidden within our subconscious that we don't know it's there. We can't find it. We don't see it. But that mental Wendigo, in order to, to reproduce itself, uses our body's creativity, our mind's creativity, in the same way that the COVID-19 virus uses um, the, our body's RNA to replicate itself. You know, uh, our, uh, the COVID-19 virus, although people talk about it being alive, it is not alive. It's more like, I, I, read, I call, saw something the other day that called it a zombie condition. That it's just a broken bits of RNA that are embedded in some fatty material and they are very, very tiny and they invade our body and they invade the cells of our body and they use our cells to recreate themselves. I don't know whether to call those zombies or vampires, you take your pick. So it uses our own creativity and, and that, that shadow part of ourselves called, uh, that, that what Jung called the shadow personality to produce a collective consciousness that was needed for the appearance in the world today. L Levy says the Wendigo works through the creative tendencies of the mind in such a way that to the extent we're unconscious of it, we unknowingly become instruments through which it acts itself out in the world while simultaneously hiding itself from being seen. That's a perfect description of what we call hidden beliefs. <clears throat> and then Levy goes on to say, the Wendigo works through the creative tendencies of the mind and projects our worst fears that it digs up from within us out into the world. Those of you that have taken our foundations class, um, remember the, the Johari window. We've hidden our window, window so well that for all practical purposes, it's inside that 
I don't know, the world doesn't know window that is so dark and deep that it's almost unfathomable. By hiding it so deeply, we allow it to become nourished off of our fears, our envies, our angers, our greed, if you've got that going, and it becomes stronger and stronger. And in becoming stronger, it more and more collects our conch, correct, uh, collects, corrects, controls our consciousness and therefore the collective consciousness. But when we recognize that all the negative things we're seeing, <laughs> that telephone's gonna make me nuts. That's my Wendigo, by the way. When we recognize that all the negative things we see going on are partly produced by our own Wendigo's contribution to the collective consciousness, we can heal from the virus of selfishness, ego, um, and fear and anger by working on our shadow self, by working on those parts of us that are hindering us from manifesting the most wonderful possible outcomes. The Wendigo, at the end of the day, is nothing more than an underdeveloped part of ourselves. It's underdeveloped, it's underworked, it's neglected, and it has been for a long time because we've chosen to hide it away. And it was looking for something to do. And it found it in our fears and our anger. So how are we supposed to overcome the Wendigo? By focusing on our awareness of our creative power and creating it out of our own thought stuff and recognizing that what we are really afraid of is just a part of us. We can, as Levy says, kill the Wendigo. But we need to do more. <clears throat> we need to remember that the very power of creativity that we're using to create is spirit coming to us with a new and fresh creativity. It is the divine creativity that we've been using to produce all of these negative effects in our lives. One of the most creative writers I've ever read um, is science fiction writer, Philip K. Dick. Uh, I originally read him in the 60s and 70s when he was almost unknown to most people in the world except for science fiction fans. And um, in fact, he died penniless and yet Shortly after his death in 1982, the world discovered him. And so we have movies like mm, Blade Runner, Total Recall, The Adjustment Bureau that are, are based on his books, uh, and the Amazon video series that ran for, I think, three years, The Man in the High Castle, all based on works by Dick. Calling him Dick makes me a little uncomfortable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him what he called himself in, when he spoke in the third person, which is PKD, PKD. In our classes, we urge people to develop their own cosmology. And out of a series of letters and journals of Dick's, uh, of PKDs, uh, some, some of his, people who followed him, who were good friends of his, put together a book um, of his cosmology. In his cosmology, um, his cosmology was kind of weird, okay? It was a combination of Gnosticism and medieval Christianity and quantum physics. His cosm in his cosmology, the divine energy of the universe is alpha and omega, the beginning and end. It's God the Father as the original creator and coming forth from creation from the beginning of time. But he, he took a quote from Jesus in the book of John um, that says, uh, where he tells his followers, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you, will be in you. 
is what he said. And so out of that, PKD took the idea that where the creator is coming from the past, spirit, which brings us creative ideas, is coming from the future. And coming from the far future, the end of time, it knows everything. And, and, and so it feeds us a mental picture of everything if we can receive it. He said, this is God as spirit. And it's coming to us from the end of time because it stands at the end of time. It already knows everything that could be and is constantly bombarding us with all the possibilities of the future we might create. In other words, the truth. But the future coming from the end of time is fighting against this whole current of time, a whole current of our life experiences and all of our beliefs and, and thoughts because of it. And therefore, it's a comparatively weak force when compared to that. Spirit, he thought, coming from the end of time uses tachyons. Now tachyons are a hypothetical atomic particle that moves faster than the speed of light and goes backwards in time. And that hypothesis has been around for quite a while. Um, it's kind of controversial and it's never been proven in any way, but that's what he believed, that spirit was coming to us through the tachyons. It was speaking to us through the tachyons that are just floating around us out there in the universe. And our role, he said, is to tune into those particular messages that the universe is sending out so that we can catch the creative idea that's being sent. But he said, we have to tune into the right signal, otherwise it's going to manifest for us in a negative way. Holmes said something very similar, actually. He said that we are both mental and bro uh, broadcasting stations and mental receiving stations. I think that if either of them were alive today, they'd be talk probably talking about the internet. They would be, mm, what do I want to say? They would be talking about you and I as the computer and the internet as, as the universal energy all around us, sending us the creative ideas, the cloud. All of the creative ideas in the universe residing in the cloud. And whatever it is that we were seeking, we have to go into the cloud and download for ourselves the message that we want, the, the idea, the creative idea that we want, so that we can um, manifest it in our lives. But we have to be careful about the website we go to, because some of the websites are positive and some are negative. Some of the e mental emails we get are positive and some are negative. Some of the, the blogs, the mental blogs, if you will, that we're downloading are positive and some of them are negative. It's those, you know how sometimes you have this oh, idea that suddenly comes into your mind and it seems like your brain just runs away with it? That's what I'm talking about when I talk about a mental blog. It's our job to pick the right website. And once we die, have done that, Oh, and by the way, we pick that right website through our emotions, either positive or negative. When we, when we think about something, when we are looking at what's going on around us, we, we, we feel emotions, either positive or negative, depending on what we're looking at in the world. And that's how we tune into the websites. And those websites just simply download download automatically. It's like once we find that message, that idea, that creative idea from spirit, it just comes in. It just downloads with no effort required. And it opens us 
to a new wonderful idea. See what we have done, we can undo. We have created this, con this collective consciousness of COVID-19, of economic depression, of mental depression. We can uncreate it in the same way by changing the mental websites we're going to, by seeing the world and choosing to see the world in, in a new way. Finding a new website, a website that opens us to a new, positive, ever more creative idea about what's going on in the world and how we can manifest a world that is a, a thing of joy filled with abundance and health for everyone. We create the con collective consciousness we live in. We don't create it all alone, but we contribute to it. We contribute to it through the thoughts that we send out into that cloud of divine energy called, called collective consciousness. And it's exactly like the internet. As they used to say about computer programming, garbage in, garbage out. That's what we're doing. And we were born to be receptacles. Receptacles of creative ideas that'll manifest as a new normal. Let's be that. Let's live that. Let's, let's be what we were born to be, the vessels of a new, more creative, and more positive world of unity with one another and all creation. Instead of praying from a place of fear, let's change the conversation and nature of our mental emails, blogs, and websites, and let's confidently walk forward, knowing that the end of all this will be, as Chopra said, something very fabulous and exciting. So if you will, just close your eyes and pray with me for a moment. Join me in knowing <clears throat> that there is a, a divine, a divine life expressing in the universe, a divine idea, creative idea of perfection that is the universe itself. It is that love that the universe is flowing out to us and through us. It is, it is who I am. And depending on the part of that creative thought of the universe, that, that, that divine mind that I tune into, that I, that I go to the website of, I'm either going to produce a positive or a negative experience in my life. And as that's true for me, I know it's true for each and every person with us this morning and every sentient being not with us today. Knowing that that is the truth, I know for each and every one of us and each and every sentient being, every living thing, that we move into the realm of being open to those positive creative ideas that will heal and bless the world, that will heal all from this condition called COVID-19, that will heal our economy, that will heal our own personal finances, that will heal the mental depression that is going around, but only when we turn to the positive. the positive energy, the positive consciousness that is all around us in that divine cloud. And as we do that, we bring into being, we manifest the most perfect, perfect manifestation of life, the most perfect manifestation of physical reality and the world that we live in. 
for that, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that we, as, as the observers, the participant observers in all of this, as, as the metaphysical consciousness of this planet, can direct this law, can direct this cloud to produce only the positive effects. And I know that it does that now, and I give thanks. I have spoken my word of love, knowing, knowing that the law has been impelled into action, has manifested the most perfect demonstration of love and truth. The most perfect demonstration of that, that positive creative idea manifested right here and now for all. I release and I let go. And I say, and so it is. Namaste. Namaste.